you guys must have paid attention to the fact that winter is here and in this winter people generally try to buy water heaters and this water heaters are generally available in storage tank sizes that are as little as 10 liters uh, and as big as like 35 liters generally for fixed power load unless uh, you go above that then you need dedicated electrical systems however to save money many times people buy the smallest possible unit thinking that it is cheap while it is technically cheap it's expensive to run you're like okay how it can be more expensive to run given the fact that it has almost everything else the same same. same plumbing, same wiring, same electrical heater. Why? Well, it has worst surface area to volume ratio, meaning if you have a smaller water tank, the liter of water versus the meter square area, it's not really good. And as long as you can keep making it bigger, it becomes better. Meaning, let's just say at a 10 liter uh, water tank, you have 10 liters of water and one meter square of surface area. And then you make it bigger, let's say 20 liters. Here's the surface area per liter goes down even though your total surface area went up meaning your water without any insulation will cool down much slower so bigger you make it the better it gets it's a fundamental physics level thing so insulation does not matter that much and that's why a lot of people in uh, basically hospitality industry be it hospital and be it uh, uh, restaurants and things basically where you have a lot of bathrooms and you want to provide hot water a uh, lot of people to save capital investment generally buy smaller heaters which is a big money burning system it always makes more economical sense to have one giant water heater or two smaller ones uh, relatively speaking where you can even shut down one for maintenance and that way you can get a very good uh, you know a high efficiency heating simply because cooling self cooling is much more minimized even with the insulation being same and this also has another advantage that now you can even run what we call hot water return line at that point in time you generally have a uh, basically hot water tap and there is a t junction that allows you to bypass that now like why would you want to bypass it well here's the deal what happens to the water that is in the pipes it starts to cool down let's say you heat it up to nice 50 degrees celsius it starts to cool down but here's the deal you can figure out how uh, low how long it will take let's just say it takes one hour to drop from 50 degrees celsius to 40 degrees celsius and you're like you do not want to touch uh, let's say anything below 30 degrees celsius water cool awesome figure it out how long that takes and then you can have a pump that basically runs a check valve and uh, recirculates the water and tada so the moment you open your tap you will get warm water or hot water you will never get cold water that way you can save water and not to mention you also uh, reduce your wastage of heated water also so this is a really nice way of getting best of all things yes capital cost does go higher but your quality of service goes up your maintenance goes down your running cost goes down and in case of a power outage your hot water tank will actually able to hold on for much longer especially if it's a large unit not a small unit well good luck the water will cool down maybe as quickly as few hours